What is going on everybody? My name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. Today I'm going to explore the Express File Upload NPM package and then we're going to build a simple user profile by combining the Express File Upload, the Express Handlebars and MySQL. The video took a little bit longer than I expected but if you're here for a specific part then the video will be timestamped and now let me quickly show you a quick demo of what we'll be building and hopefully you'll be able to take some of that code and plug in into your own project. So first of all, we're going to build the upload form and in the second part of this tutorial, we're going to create this custom part. If I was to grab a new profile photo, so choose file and then let's select my logo for example, open and submit. You will see that the page refreshed and then it uploaded my profile photo, which is now stored in the database. So if I refresh, you will see that the data is actually retained. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, like the video, and if you have any questions, as always, please comment below. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Welcome everybody, and let's get started. As always, we're gonna start from zero. Let's create a new folder. Inside here, I'm going to initialize a new project. On Windows, I can do left shift, right click, open PowerShell window here. If you're on Mac or Linux, you might just have to CD to your project folder. Once you're here, let's initialize a new project by doing npm init. Let's just give a package name of something like node.js user profile. This should be good. And let's just keep pressing enter until we finish the setup. This has now created a package.json file for us and we can start installing the dependencies that we need for this project. Now let's start one by one. So we can do npm install and the first one that I want to install is express. So we can create an express server. So express, then we need the express file upload. We need the express handlebars, which will be our templating engine. So express dash handlebars and last but not least we need mysql in order to connect to a mysql database and do some basic queries let's press enter and this should take a second now that we're done with this we might as well install nodemon so every time we make some changes on our project nodemon we will reset the server for us so let's do npm npm install dash dash save dash dev and we're going to do not more. Let's press enter and wait for this to finish. Now that we're done with this, we can open our project by doing code dot. If you're using another code editor, that's absolutely fine. Just go to file, open your project and continue from here. As you can see in our package JSON, we have all dependencies as always, and we have all development dependencies here. So I want to make sure that my project starts with Nodemon. And to do this, let's create a new line under script. So comma, start, columns, and then we want to start with Nodemon. But the file that we want to start is going to be called app.js. And of course, we need to create that file next. So let's save this and create app.js. So new file, app.js. And we can start by creating an express server. So let me close the package.json and save. All right, to create an express server, it's fairly easy. I've done a couple of tutorials on this already. So I'm going to go ahead and beast this super quickly. We need to require express, const re express equals require, and then we're requiring express. The next thing that we can do is set a const for our app, which will be equals express. Then we need a port number. So let's do const port equals 5000. Or if you wish to publish your project, you might have to do process.environment.port or 5000. Of course, um, in this example, we're just going to be using 5000 and we now need to tell express just to listen on this port so we can do app dot listen we can pass the port number so port then comma and then this will be an arrow function like so and we can do console dot log and we can console log something like 
listening on port and then we can pass the port number like so. Right, this is all good. If we then go back to PowerShell and we do npm start, hopefully you should see the green line here saying starting node app.js and listening on port 5000. This is all good. It means that our server is running. And now if I go to the browser and I do localhost with the port number of 5000, you will see that we're getting cannot get and that's all good. This is because we don't have any route yet and we haven't included the uh, view engine either. So let's go back and do some of that work now. Let's start by including the express handlebars and set that up. So to do this, we can do const. For short, we can do express phbs and then we can require express handlebars like so. And if you watch some of my other videos, you probably know that as the foot express handlebars dot handlebars extension, which is quite long. So we definitely want to change that, but we also need to tell our app to use express handlebars as a view engine. So let's do that in here. We can say templating engine. And then inside here, we can do app.engine pass HPS, and then we can do a E X P. We might as well copy this from here. And inside here is where you can pass some options. And the only option I want to pass is the extension name. I want to change this to something shorter. So to do this, we can do extension name, and then this will be dot HBS short for handlebars. Let's close this and then let's set our view engine. So app.set and then view engine comma and then the view engine is HBS like so. All right, this is all good. We have our templating engine set, but we also need to set up, but as a default, the Express Handlebars uses a views folder and a layouts folder for the layout. So we're gonna have to create all that before we do a router. Let's create a new folder called views. And inside this folder, we're gonna have to create another one called layouts. And as a default, the Express Handlebars uses a main.hbs layout. So this is going to be our main HTML layout that we can reuse on many other pages. But today we're only going to have one page anyway. So I'll show you how it works anyway. So if we do HTML5 in here and save this, inside here is where we want to actually render our pages. So for example, I will be adding a home page. So let's add a new page called index.hbs. This needs to be inside views. So this is going to be a home page. So if we do h1, hello, and inside main.hbs, this is where we want to render our index page. So what we can do is with three curly brackets, we can just put body and this should work. I will show you how this works in a second. Uh, save this as well. And let's go back to app.js and let's create our first router. The router that I want to create will be app.get because we want to, uh, when we visit the page, we want to be able to render something. So this, I'm leaving this empty because we're only going to have one page and this is going to be our homepage. And then we have request and response as an arrow function like so. And inside here we can say res dot render and the page that we want to render, which in this case is the home page and that's index. We don't have to specify the extension here. So let's save this and let's see what happens. If we go to our terminal, we will see, you will see that I'm not getting any errors, which is a good sign. And then if you go back to our browser and refresh, you will see that we're getting hello. If I do control new, you will see that we're getting the HTML from our main handlebars file. And then inside here, we are rendering the home page, which is good. So let's zoom out a little bit and continue. So first of all, for the people that just want to create the upload form, let's do that. And then later on, 
we're going to create a nice looking card and we're going to hook everything up to a MySQL database and everything will be timestamped below anyways. So let's start by including the express file upload. To do this, we can do const and then that will be file upload equals require. And then inside here, we require express file upload like so. To use the express file, file upload and to actually use the default option, all we have to do is, let's do default option. All we have to do here is say app.use and then do file upload like so. Now inside here is where you can pass all sorts of settings like so. So you'd normally list your settings in here and you can pass, you can change the quality of the image. Um, you can set up a temporary folder and th there is a lot of options. So explore the documentation and obviously see what you need for your project. But I'm going to keep it super simple for now and remove all this. And this is basically the basic usage. And now I'm thinking, let's start by doing the HTML form first, and then we can create the logic inside here after. So inside or index.hbs is where our form will be. So let's remove everything and let's create a brand new form in here. So we can do form, press enter, and the action of the form will be, which means basically we want to post on our homepage and as a, and the method will be post equals post. We also need an encoded type, which basically is an attribute that specifies uh, how the form data should be encoded on submit. So to do this, we can do an ENC and then type equals and then we can do multi-part slash form data like so and now we can focus on our inputs before we do this let's title this something like upload profile photo and then let's start by creating the input so the first input will be actually a type of file because we want to include a file and this will have the name of, let's keep it simple and say sample file. And this will accept only images for now. But of course you can remove this and it would accept any, any files. So I'm just gonna say image to make it easy. Slash, and this means all types of images like PNG, JPEG, GIFs, and so on, or GIFs. Let's close this and then let's create another input. And this time, this input will be the type of submit. And this will basically play the role of a button. So the name for this, we don't need. We don't need, we don't need an ID either, but I'm just going to give it a class for later on, which will be BTN and then BTN primary. That would do. Let's tidy a form up like so let's go to the top save this and let's have a look at how our form looks like All right, we're going to keep it simple for now just so i can show you how to upload a file but once we are done with this and if you want to have a look at the rest of the stuff i'm going to style everything a little bit and then hook it up my scale database so let's do the logic for the form i'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit more so first of all we obviously need a folder where we can upload those files. And I'm going to keep it simple and just create an upload folder inside here, like so. And then let's go back to app.js and start writing our functionality. Because we're posting the form, this is fine that we're rendering the homepage, but the next route will be, will be the same page, but instead of get, we want to post. We can keep this as it is because it's the home page. Then this will be request response. And now we can start writing the upload functionality in here. And the example that I'm going to give you is actually available on their documentation as well. 
This is where I got it from. But of course, we I'm going to explain everything in detail. We need to create a variable name that will hold the that will hold the file. So let's keep everything consistent. So in our form here, we have it as sample file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do let sample file close. And then we are going to have to do uh, upload path one. So let's do let upload upload path and close. The first thing that we need to do is check the request to see whether we're getting the file. And to do this, we can do an if statement here and say if the request files or the object dot keys dot keys rec dot files dot length is equals 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 zero then we want to display that the no file was uploaded so we can return res.status and then inside here the status will be 400.send and inside here we can paste our message which will be no files were uploaded like so. So basically what this does is if our object is empty, no files were uploaded. But if there was a file, we need to grab that file. So I'm going to use the sample file let here. So far sample file equals, and then we're going to get the file. And to do this, we can do rec.files.rec.files.sample file. And we can actually console log this file just so you can see what the object looks like. So let's do console.log and then we can do a sample file. Let me remove some of this. Technically speaking, we should be able to post something and console log uh, some of the file information and we might as well give it a go. Obviously, this might not save the file just yet, but we're going to do that next. So let's go back, refresh, and let's grab a random file. So I'm going to grab my logo here and submit. And if you go back, you will see that obviously the page is spinning and this is because we actually didn't render anything or like redirect, which is bad. But uh, if we go back to the PowerShell, you will see that we're actually getting an object here and you will see that the object has a name, data, size, encoding, temp file path, and a few different things. We're going to need this move function in order to be able to save the file in our uploads folder. But as you can see, this is how easy it is to actually grab a file and be able to uh, get the data and we just need to save it now. But let's go back. This is going to break obviously, but let's go back and do that move uh, function. Let's say name of the put is name of the input is sample file and let's do use mv function to place file on the to place file on the server. Okay, to use this function, what we can do is grab this sample file object, so sample file, and then we can use the move function mv, like so, and then we can pass the path, which I haven't actually created yet. So let's grab the upload path first of all, and we can actually paste it in here. So upload path will be underscore, sorry, it will be equals underscore underscore the name, which is the main directory name of our project. And then we can do plus and then select the folder that we want to upload our file to, which is upload slash upload, sorry, and then slash. And then we can save this file with the name and then we can save. And then we need to pass a name for the file so I can grab the sample file object and then we can use um, we, then we can go inside and grab the name by doing dot name like so now that we have our upload path we can actually put it inside here and then we can say function error 
and then inside here we can do if we have an error then we want to return a status of 500 so return res dot status 500 and then this will be sent and then we can send the error like so that doesn't look very good and it's because that needs to be here or that needs to be here okay that looks a lot better <laughs> let's close this let's make some space for the rest of the code and that's pretty much it but the last thing i want to do is if the file gets uploaded I want to either like render a page or I want to display a message. So to do this, we can just do res.send and we can just send a message or file upload it like so and close. Obviously this needs to be tidied up a lot more and I can do right click for my document a little bit. Okay, this will do. So if we go to our upload folder, as you can see, it's now empty but let's see what happens if we try to upload a new file so let's refresh this let's browse a new file let's grab the cat from unsplash.com and open it and submit i think i broke the server okay let's try again okay file uploaded which is a good sign so if you go back to a folder and in uploads you will see that we have a new file in here and this is the file of the cat and if we upload one more let's grab my logo for example and submit file upload it and if i go back you'll see that my logo is in here which is good okay so now we pretty much have our upload working which is pretty cool all right the next part of this tutorial will be creating the cart on the front page connecting to MySQL and obviously saving this uh, file upload on the record. Let's start by creating the card first of all, then we can add a little bit of CSS and then we'll add the MySQL. If we go back to index.hbs, let's create a super simple card that we can display our data in. So let's do card. And inside this card, we're gonna have a couple of things. So we're gonna have an image, this image is going to have a class of cart underscore image. That's two underscores, by the way. And we're going to have to set up a default image as well in here. So we can do slash images slash default, default dot JPEG and have user, user profile for now. Then let's create a title, like a, like a name. Then let's create a title for a card. So this can be wrapped in an H1. And this could be something like ruddy. Then inside here, we can do a class of card underscore underscore title. Then let's create another div for the job. So this will be card underscore underscore job. And inside here, I can do web developer then let's add a little bit of a description so for this i'm going to use a paragraph and for the paragraph i'm going to do a class of card underscore underscore about and i'm going to paste a little bit of text in here just to make it look a little bit better so let's do toggle wrap and let's format it all right that's looking okay i guess maybe like this at least and then let's create a fake button here for statics so button and then type button and then we can do class of btn btn dash primary view profile all right obviously we're not going to hook this up we're going to get some data from the database and the image that's pretty much it all right this is looking good if we save this go back to the browser let's see what we have as you can see i have zoomed in the color a lot. as you can see we're going to need a little bit of css but if you're not interested in this part feel free to skip it so i'm going to go ahead let's create a public folder inside the public folder i'm going to have images folder 
and I'm going to have a CSS folder. Inside the CSS folder, I'm going to have a main.scss file, and this is where my styles will go. So let's watch the SCSS. Feel free to use a normal CSS as well. It's not a problem, it's just easier with SCSS. And we're gonna have to grab a default image for project. So I'm going to do that now. Here is my default uh, JPEG that I'm going to be using. And if we go back now, we need to actually hook up the style sheet to our main layout. So in views layout main.hbs, we can do a link to a style sheet and this will be linked to main dot css but we also need to specify the folder which is css dash main dot css now this won't work because express doesn't know about our public folder um, and i want to make the cd and i want to make the path as easy as possible so let's go back to app.js and somewhere around here we can set up a static folder so in fact, we can do two of them. So let's do static files. The first one, let's do app.use. And the first one is going to be express.static. And then we can have public. And then the next one that I want to do is actually to, to be able to access the upload folder easily from, from our HTML, I'm going to do the upload folder as well. So upload like so. So technically speaking, now if I go back to the main dot handlebars, this should now work. And to test this, we can go to main.css and do a little test. So background color of aqua or this one here. So let's save this, refresh, and as you can see, the color change. So I'm going to do a little bit of styling super quickly, but as I said, feel free to skip this part if you wish to. And I'm going to keep this as basic as possible. First of all, I'm going to include a font from Google. So let's work that in with import. You can include this in your index, in your HTML if you wish. I'm just going to import it today. And a few things that we need to do is reset the margins. So margin, and then I'm going to do zero, zero everywhere. Then we need to set our font family, font family to be poppins. And then we can do sans that, and then we can do comma sans serif like so, and we're good. And then for the color, I'm going to copy and paste a very gray color here, which is F4, F6, F8. And we're done here. For the images, I'm going to do them kind of responsive. So we can do image with 100%. So basically if the images are too big for the box, they'll just scale down. And let's create a wrapper. If we do a wrapper, this will basically help us to center align the boxes. So we can do display grid maybe, and then we can just do it the lazy way and do place item center. I do know that this doesn't work on Edge, I believe, or Internet Explorer, but it works on all other major browsers. So I'm going to use it to speed up the process. And then let's do a height of 100 VH for now. So we all get here. If I refresh, everything is looking good, but we do need to wrap this inside this wrapper. So let's grab this, go back to uh, main.hps, and I'm going to wrap the body. So let's do wrap that like so and wrap the body nice let's save this and as you can see everything is centered which is fine that's the way i want it and now let's just do a little bit of design on the buttons and the cat for the buttons let's keep it super simple btn and then this btn will have a border of none to none to remove all the borders the full borders color will be set to you to white then we can have a little bit of padding so maybe like 15 pixels by 32 pixels then we can have the text aligned to the center i want the text decoration to be set to none just in case we add it as a link and then display maybe inline block or you know what uh 
I'm going to display this. Yeah, let's see how this works. Display in our box and we'll see how this works. We might need to change this. And then let's do font size, something like 16 pixels. Then a little bit of margin, four pixels, two pixels. And then the cursor needs to be changed to a pointer. And I want to set the width to be always 200 pixels for this button. And then the border radius, something like three pixels will do. And now let's do a colorful button so we can do btn-primary. And this will be a background color of blue. So it'll be like 0086B. B A and this is a very like baby blue color, I guess. So let's save this, refresh, and our buttons are looking cool. Um, we have a little bit more. Let's do the card now. Should be fairly simple to do. So for the card, let's create a new class in here, card. And then inside here, I want to center align everything. So text align center. Margin, let's reset to zero auto. Do I need this to center the card? Maybe, I'm not too sure. Uh, the width, I'm going to center. The width, I'm going to do 400 pixels. We probably don't need this actually. Let's remove it. And then the height we're gonna leave as auto, so we're not gonna specify this. Let's add a little bit of padding of 20. Border radius to make it look good of five pixels. I'm going to say that the background color needs to be white. And then I'm going to copy and paste a drop shadow that I've prepared. Now inside this card, we're going to have our image, the title and the job. So let's do that super quickly. We can do ampersand underscore underscore image. And for the image, I want to display it as block, then margin zero, auto to center align it. Then let's give it a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels because we're gonna have to make it a circle. So to do this, we're gonna do border radius of 50%, then overflow hidden. Do I need to overflow hidden? Probably. And then we can do object fit. So our fit doesn't get stretched or uh, so basically I want my image to fully fit inside the circle and this will be set to cover. And then last but not least, I'm going to copy the shadow from the top here. And then let's do a little bit of border actually, border. And the border will be three pixels, solid white. So this border will stick out because we have a little bit of shadow. Now. Let's focus on the title. So ampersand and score and score title. And for the title, we can do margin zero. And actually we're done with this. We just need to reset the margin on the H1, I believe. And then for the job, let's do underscore underscore job. And then inside here, we can do a color of something like gray. So six, six E, eight one nine two all right i think this is good enough let's how let's have a look at how our page looks like all right i think this is okay so we don't waste any more time on this and now we can focus on creating the database and grabbing the image and then the details in here for the database i will be using xamp just because i already have it installed in here, but you can use whatever you like. So let's start XAMPP and create a very simple database. If you go to localhost PHP my admin, you should be able to get this page. The username is important and the password, so make sure that you have them available. Mine is basically uh, username is root and password is password. We need to create a new database to do this. Inside here, we can click on new. Let's give our database a name of something like user profile. And then let's click create. This will ask us how many fields, how many columns would you like? 
and I'm only going to have five fields here. So let's do five and create the table to be user. So let's press go. And the first one that I always have is ID. This will be an integer. It will be auto increment. Then we can have a name. The name will be Varcha 45, 45, and that will be fine. Then we can have maybe our profile image. And this could be, I don't know, this could be a Varcha and let's just set it to 100. But of course, you can change this to whatever your needs are because there is no one number that fits all. Then we can do a job title and the job title can be Varcha and can be 45 characters. And let's just do the description as well. Description like so. And the description, let's, I don't know, let's set it as text, which is a quite, quite a big number basically, but we're not gonna have so much text. Let's save this. And as you can see, our table of, our database of user profile is ready. And we have a table of user. All of the fields are here. And we just need to add one record for this example. So I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to leave the ID as the foot. The name I'm going to set up as ready. Image, leave this empty because we want to update it from the application. Job title, I'm going to put web developer. And let's copy some of the description from the page. So I'm going to copy this as well. And paste it in here. All right, this is all good. We have one record and we can now start by creating, by connecting to the database. To do this, let's go back. We're all good here. We'll come back to this later. And let's just open up .js and let's start by including MySQL. So let's do const MySQL equals require and then MySQL. Close this, but basically we need to create a pool. So to do this, under maybe like our templating engine here, let's make some space so we can see a little bit better. And then let's do a connection pool. To do this, we can do const pool equals mysql dot create pool. And then inside here is where we can pass a few options. Now, the first option that I want to pass is the connection limit. And I'm going to set this as 10 for now. And then we're going to need the host name. So this will be for me, localhost. Then I'm going to need the user. And the user for me is root. I'm going to need the password. And for me, for this is password. I'm going to need the database name. And the last thing that we need is the database name. So database column and then user profile is the database that we just created. So if I tidy this up somehow, maybe like this. Okay, this is looking good. Just so you can see better. We should be good to go here. The next thing that we need to do is see whether we can connect to the database. And to do this, we can do pull dot get connection. And then we're going to have an error here that we can pass an error in here and get the connection. Connection. This will be an error function. And now inside here, we can check for the error by doing if error, then throw throw error or do whatever you like. So we're not connected, not connected. But if we don't get an error, we can just do console dot log and then we can log connect it. Right, this should be good enough for, for us to connect to the database. So let's have a look whether this is going to work. If I save this, let's go to uh, the PowerShell. And as you can see, we have no problems. We're connected to the database, which is good. If I make a spelling mistake, for example, my database name that doesn't exist, I put two, you will see that we're getting an error now, which is saying SQL message, unknown database user profile too. All right, let's go back, save this. 
and we are good to go. We can potentially do a first query to get some data from the database and display some of the information. And to do this, we can do this on get. So inside here, we can basically copy this here, paste it and continue from here. And all we need to do is pretty much do a very simple query. To do this, let's just do, so we have the connection, so we can do connection dot query and inside here is where we're going to wrap our query so this is a normal mask scale query so we can do something like select and i want to select everything from the user table where id is equals one because the record that i have already is one so i'm going to do this manually like so just for this example and then inside here we're going to have an error and we're going to have rows. So rows is where we're going to get the data as an object and we can use it. We can use handlebars to render it in a second. So this will be an arrow function. Sorry, this is an arrow function. And inside here, first of all, we might want to release the connection. So let's do once done. Once then release connection and to do this, we can do connection dot release and then close and then close. If we don't get an error, then we want to render the page. So I can do the rest dot render, co copy this, sorry, cut this and paste it in here. And I want to render the index page, of course. Uh, basically, we're going to the database, grabbing some data and I want to render the index page. And I also want to pass the data that we're grabbing from the database by doing comma and then in curly brackets, we just pass the rows like so. Let's tidy this up, right click, tidy it. And it's looking so messy. Messier than usual, I think. All right, this is much better now. And let's save. If we go back and if we don't have any errors, let's have a look. Yeah, the server crashed earlier and now that it's restarted, hopefully we can refresh. And as you can see, everything is working correctly. Let's zoom out. Now we can start populating this data from the database. To do this, we can go to index.hps and I'm going to make a loop inside the card instead of the outside. To do a loop with handlebars, we can do curly brackets, curly brackets, so two curly brackets, the hash symbol, and then each, and then we can pass the object of rows, which we're getting from here, if you remember from the database, and then we can start looping for the data, but of course we need to close this. So to close it, two curly brackets to open, two curly brackets to curly brackets to close and then slash each. Kind of like HTML, I guess. That's why I like handlebars. It's pretty nice. And then we can start by populating some of the data. So for example, the name here, uh, let's do curly brackets, curly brackets, this dot profile underscore. No, this dot name. And for the job would be, would be this dot I believe job underscore title and for the description i believe it was just this dot um, description maybe and save hopefully if this is all working we should be able to get the data from the database so let's refresh as you can see uh, the data is exactly the same but if i put web designer And if I change the name to Radi123, you'll see that we get Radi123 and and Radi123 is a web designer. And this is also coming from the database, which is pretty cool. Now we need to do the same for the user image. Um, but let me swap this to the way it used to be because it looked better. All right. For the image, what we can do is set a default image just in case the user hasn't uploaded one. So inside here, we can actually write an if statement with EJS. And to do this, we can do curly brackets, curly brackets, and then we can do the hash symbol. And then if this underscore dot, sorry, this 
dot profile image underscore image which is this field here profile underscore image i'll zoom in a little bit so you can see so if this uh, exists we want to grab this image uh, we want to populate the image source with the one from the database and obviously this would come from a folder the folder called uploads this is where our images are going to be uploaded so we can do Actually, we probably don't need to specify the upload image, but we'll see. Uh, we probably don't need to specify the folder now because I have it as a, because I have it set as a static file. So let's just do curly bracket, curly bracket. And inside here, we can do this dot profile underscore image like so and save. And then, and if this is not true, if this image if this doesn't exist, then we can do an else statement. And for the else statement, we can just display a default image. So I'm going to grab this and paste it in here. And I could have just kept it, I guess. But let's do it like this. And then I'm going to do slash img, which is all images folder in here. I'm going to use this image here, which is misspelled. So let's rename it super quickly to default. And I'm going to use that. So image default.jpg. And then, of course, you can do the all tags, however you like. And the last thing that we need to do is, of course, close the if statement. So we can do curly bracket, curly bracket, if. All right, let's save this and go back to the page. And as you can see, we're getting the default image. And this is because we don't have anything in the database yet. For the next step, we're going to have to actually work with the upload form and update the database here so we can uh, upload profile image. And then hopefully the profile image will appear in here. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Lucky for us, we've already done the hard job. So if you go back to app.js and hopefully we should be able to just grab all of this and do another query inside here. So where we have rest.send, I'm thinking of replacing this. So let me comment it just in case I upload this so people can see it and reuse it. And I'm going to paste the uh, database connection here. But obviously, we need to change the query a little bit. So this will be update. And let's just remove everything. Update user set profile underscore image equals question mark and then we can do where id is equals one all right if you don't understand this fully i have done a full tutorial on queries how to do them and why i'm doing the question mark and all that stuff and now all we need to do is pass the name of the profile image and to do this, we can do another comment here and just pass the data inside here. So to do this, we can grab the sample name like so and just pass that. Save this and let's have a look at what we get. One issue that we are having here is that we are having, uh, we're having to render the page again. But instead of rendering, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redirect. So what I'm going to do is res redirect. And I want to redirect to the to the home page, which is just slash. And then we're not going to pass any anything in here. And of course, you can do if if there is no error, we can redirect. But if there is an error, we can do an error statement and we can do console.log the error or whatever you like, of course. So hopefully, if I tidy this up a little bit, format the document. Let's save this and see what we get. So if I go back, refresh this, let's grab a photo. So I'm going to grab this, uh, my logo. I'm going to open and submit. As you can see, this actually submitted, updated the data and my logo is now appearing here. This is coming from the database. If I go to the database and zoom in, this is the previous one. Obviously, we need to refresh. And you can see that the profile image is now here, which is awesome. And let me demonstrate it one more time. If I do choose file and we select this cat from here, open, submit, we have the cat. If I refresh the database, you will see that the 
ID, the name of the image has changed. And also I can remove them from here if you wish, just for the example, let's delete both of them and re-upload. So obviously now if I refresh, uh, we're not getting anything and okay. Um, we maybe need to check the object, whether the ob whether this is empty a little bit better. But anyways, if we choose a file and upload my logo, submit, we have the logo, which is pretty cool. The file is in here and that's brilliant. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what about, well, right, what if I want to have a unique image name? Now, there's so many ways that you can do this, but if you want to have like, for example, you could pass a user, user ID maybe plus something else. But basically, let me change, let me show you how you can change the image name. So to do this, it's actually fairly simple. All you need to do is on this line here, all you need to change is this here. So what I can do is I can change the name to rat rad, sorry, rad.jpg like so, save it and look at what happens next. So if I refresh, if I upload a new image, so we upload the cat, submit. All right, the image doesn't show in here, but if we go back and have a look at the uploads folder, you'll see that we have an image called rad.jpg and this is the cat. And the image is actually not showing here, and this is because we are still grabbing the actual uh, name of the original image. So of course, you're gonna have to insert the name in here. So for example, this would have to be, in this case, uh, rat.jpg, save, uh, refresh, let's upload an image, let's upload this one, and this will work if that makes sense. Now, if you want a totally unique name, what you could do is go to npm, go to npm.js.com and search for UUID. And basically you can use this package to generate universally unique IDs like the example here. And that's pretty much it. Feel free to explore this, but I'm gonna wrap it in here and I'm going to put this back to normal like so. But yeah, I'm going to put this uh, back to normal, refresh, and that would be everything from this tutorial. I hope that you found this useful. Please consider subscribing to my channel, smash the likes, and if you have any future suggestions or comments, please comment below, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Ruddy, and you're watching my channel, Ruddy the Brand.